Hello friends, in today's episode we will look at growing IV gourd. Now when I bought the seeds, this is how the product looked like on the seed packet. And the reason I call this mystery vegetable is something you will know towards the end of the video. I started some of my seeds indoors and while this is not a great idea for gourds, let's see how well that works. These are seeds that were sowed directly in a pot and they took longer to germinate but as you can see from the seedlings they look much healthier than the ones I germinated indoors and the reason for that is the light source that I had was a little far away from the seedlings. This is what causes leggy growth. For germinating the seeds I used coconut coir as you can see here and I've started to like coconut coir more and more simply because of the ease with which the seeds emerge from the seed starting medium and it's a great way to start your seeds. It's easy, it's cheap and it's pretty effective as well. Now do leggy seedlings really matter? Do they grow as well? We'll find out soon. The seedlings in the pot are not leggy as you can see here. This is how your seedlings should look like as opposed to the ones growing under the lights that you can see here. Now one solution to getting good seedlings under lights is to use grow lights that are placed very close to the seedling itself. I might show that in one of my future videos but now I have a T5 growing light system which is really good you can see the link in the video description if you want to buy yours and we are now ready to pot the seedlings they have grown large enough that they can be transplanted in their own container now for these containers I have used Promix HP growing medium a really good growing medium that I have reviewed in one of my previous videos and I will be transplanting my seedlings right here now if you have leggy seedlings, one of the things that you can do to prevent the legginess is to plant them deep. And this is especially true for leggy seedlings like tomatoes where the plant will send out roots all along the area that's beneath the soil surface. Now when planting your seedlings, this is a good time to add some kind of fertilizer I have used a slow release fertilizer in one of these containers and in the other container I have used an organic sustained release fertilizer. Both of them work really well when starting seedlings. You might even want to add some liquid fertilizer during the first few days after planting your seedlings. It just lets them recover from that transplant shock and lets them grow freely. Now once this is done you would need to place your transplanted seedlings in a semi shaded area and because I imagined this plant to grow into a long vine I was setting up these supports. These are regular sized tomato cages and they work really well for small containers. You just take them and put them around the plant and it works great for any kinds of climbers. So in 15 days the seedlings were big enough to be seen and they were growing really well even in the cold temperatures of December and January. Now we did have a warmer than usual December and January this year in Southern California but remember that gourds do not grow well in cold temperatures they do need warm temperatures to grow well. So these goats were growing pretty well and produced some lush green foliage and one of the things that is a problem with goats is powdery mildew. But as you can see here these goats do not have any signs of powdery mildew and the reason for that is I sprayed this plant with a milk solution 30% milk, fat free skim milk mixed with water. So one part milk and two parts of water that makes a good spraying solution for powdery mildew. So after about 50 days I was finally able to see the first fruit form in this plant 
and it looked a lot different than what I had imagined. This looks a lot bigger than what was indicated on the seat packet and I was really curious to see how this vegetable looked like and how it tasted. And this is one of the reasons why I call this the mystery vegetable because all along I thought it would be similar to the one in the picture and it would grow into a wine. However, what it produced actually looked something like zucchini or some kind of squash and not at all like what I was expecting. The vegetable however looked very interesting, very pretty to look at and I was really curious to harvest and taste it. So I then began harvesting the vegetables. So after the harvest uh, this actually looked more like a miniature zucchini so I was a little surprised but let's see how this vegetable looks like when chopped up. These uh, vegetables just like I would use zucchini and the taste was really good. I was really pleasantly surprised by the taste. So I would like to know from you folks whether you have tried eating Thai IV gourd and whether it looks like this and whether it tastes good. I would like to know how do you use it, whether you eat it cooked or whether you eat it raw in your salads or whether you make stir fries out of it. I'd be really interested to know. So I hope you enjoyed this video. and. This turned out to be a mystery vegetable. I know sometimes when doing gardening you do end up with these kind of situations. So I'd like to know from you my YouTube viewers. Has it ever happened to you that you grew something and it turned out different? I would like to know your experiences. I'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.